Hello class and welcome to 7.3, factor quadratic trinomials with leading coefficient other than one. Uh, so in 7.2, we did leading coefficient that was one. Here we're doing anything that's other than one. Okay. So, and we have two objectives. We're gonna do this factoring first um, with um, GCF um, option. And we're also gonna look at factoring trinomials using the AC method. Okay. So let's start with the GCF. So um, to, to begin um, uh, factoring it, the, let's look at the question. It says factor completely 2n squared minus 8n uh, minus 42. Okay. So we have 2n, oops, rolled off. Okay, 2n squared minus 8n minus 42. Okay, in all these problems, step one, is always to factor out GCF. Okay. It's always step one. Uh, you always will scan for this, and therefore, uh, let me write this clearly. Here we look for the GCF. Now two is the smallest uh, one you see here, and so naturally that becomes your GCF. Two is pulled out, because you wanna find that which is common to all of them, and among them, you want to find the greatest common factor. So two is the greatest you can fit in each one of them. So you got two pulled out. N squared minus N minus, I'm sorry, minus 4N minus 21. Okay. Now look at um, the information inside the parentheses. Okay. Two is pulled out. So two has uh, done its role. It doesn't have any more to do. So look inside and you see that the leading coefficient is one, right? If you don't see a number in front of n squared, you know it is a one, I put it there. So that tells us that we have to use the BC method, right? Remember, we're calling it the BC method. So uh, according to that, your B is negative four and C is negative 21. Again, remember, we're only focusing on what's inside. And so you want the, two numbers that will add up to negative four and will multiply to negative 21, okay? So you can do the list of numbers, okay? What I mean by that is all the factors of negative 21. So you can always do one and negative 21. Two won't work because it's 21. Three, three and negative seven, right? Four, four doesn't work, five doesn't work, six doesn't work, seven would bring you back to this. So you also have other options. Negative one and positive 21 would also give you a negative 21 when multiplied. And negative three and a positive seven would also give you a negative 21. Among these options, you want to choose the one that adds up to a negative four. So this adds up to negative 20, this adds up to negative four, positive 20, positive four. So out of this, of course, your winner is three and negative seven. So let me continue the problem over here. Um, so I have two times, let me just repeat this uh, step. And uh, your variable is n, so you have to do n, and we got the two numbers, n plus three and n minus seven. Those were the two numbers. Just like that, you factorized it, right? It's very similar to 7.2, just that you had one extra step to remember, which was to factor out the GCF. From this point on, we will always look for any available GCF before we decide if it is BC method or like in this section, AC method. Before we decide the method, we always will want to pull out or factor out GCF. We're technically done, but um, practically we're not done yet because we need to check our answer. So to check it, n plus three, n minus, minus seven, this was our answer. To check it, we're gonna do uh, the FOIL method. Let's keep the two outside because the two cannot really jump into action yet. That will be n squared minus seven n plus three n minus 21, okay? Combine the like terms, two times n squared minus four n minus 21. One more step, it's beginning to um, look a lot like, not Christmas, <laughs> beginning to look a lot like our question. 
minus 8n minus 42. Now it matches with your question, so you know you got the answer correctly. All right. Let's do, do another one. Okay. okay, so 4y squared minus 36y plus 56, that needs to be factored completely. Okay, 2 divides them all. Yes, 2 is a common factor. Okay. But you want to find the greatest. So is there a, a number greater than 2 that you can find that will divide them all correct evenly. And so we see that four will work. Four divides them all evenly. So we have two as a factor, four as a factor, but remember GCF stands for the greatest common factor. Four was the greatest you could find. And so that's gonna be y squared minus nine y. Use your calculator, 56 divided by four is 14. All right, once again, we pulled out the GCF and that made it into a, um, um, a, a trinomial with the leading coefficient as 1. Therefore, you're going to use BC method where B is negative 9, C is 14. And we again list out all the possible factors of 14, positive 14. One, fourteen, two, 2, and 7. That's pretty much it. We don't have any other options. We do have uh, options in terms of the signs. So two negatives will make a positive. So you have both of them being negative. Among these, you want to choose the one that gives you a sum of negative nine. This gives me positive 15, positive nine, negative 15, negative nine. Here's our answer. So come back here. Four times the variable is y. So y minus two and y minus seven. Okay. We'll come here and check. Four times y minus two, y minus seven. Plus minus a little larger, and then do the FOIL method, just like the four. Y squared minus seven y minus two y, negative two times negative seven plus fourteen. Please watch your signs. And now one more set of distribution for the four. Oh, I'm sorry. Before that, let's correct all the like terms. minus 9y plus 14. It wouldn't be wrong if you distributed, but it'll be a little premature. So now we're good to distribute because we combine all the like terms. 4y squared minus 4 times 9, 36y, plus 4 times 14, 56. That matches with our question, so come back here and box the answer. So that is when you will factor by pulling out the GCF. Okay. Now we move to the AC method. Okay. Uh, to illustrate the AC method, I deliberately chose a problem which does not have a GCF to pull out. But please remember, step one always exists. Step one is to factor out GCF. We will always do that. In this case, step one will not work. So um, let, me, let me write out the question, 6x squared plus 7x plus 2. If there is no GCF to pull out, then you, this is the problem you're left with. And this problem has a coefficient, the leading coefficient, meaning the coefficient of x squared, the leading coefficient to be a number other than 1. Right? If it is a 1, we have a technique. We have the BC method or the diamond method to proceed. But now we don't have that, and we have to contend with what we have. And this is where AC method kicks in. The clue is right there, AC. Okay? So what this says is, we, we have the B, right? B is 7. And in the, in the BC method, we simply use the B and the C, right? In AC method, we don't have the C. We have to do A times C. Okay? That is where the name AC method comes in. So that's 6 is your A, 2 is your C. 6 times 2 is 12. That's it. And then it proceeds the same way we find those two numbers. Two numbers whose product is 12 and whose sum is 7. Okay? So let's do that. So factors of 12. 12. 1 and 12. 2 and 6. 
three and four. And um, we could do the negative options too, negative one, negative 12 and all that. But from this point on, I want, to, want you to slowly begin to see that you could uh, avoid the extra work if you can also see that the B here in this case was a positive seven, right? If you had two negatives, they're not gonna add up to give you a positive seven. They will add up to give you a negative number. Therefore, you could restrict yourself from uh, listing all those other possibilities as well. All right, so let's add them up. 13, eight, seven. This one is the winner. Okay, previously we would just take the three and the four and insert it into our answer. But now we cannot do that because our leading coefficient is not a one anymore, okay? So we have a special method. Let me just do it over here. I'm gonna write this question one more time. What happens is this seven X will now have to be replaced by the three and the four, um, the two numbers you found, three X and four X. The reason is uh, we now have to turn this trinomial, which has three terms into a uh, four term polynomial. You want four terms so that it could do it by grouping, right? It could group two by two. That way we could factorize it more completely. So right now we're kind of stuck to, to kind of get us unstuck we use these two numbers to split the seven into the three and the four. So six X squared, the seven X is now plus three X plus four X plus two. Can you see that that makes sense? Yeah, because three plus three X plus four X, they're like terms, they will add up to a seven. But what this technique helps us to do is begin to see these as four terms. So if there are four terms, you can start grouping them two by two. Okay. This is something we did uh, earlier. So factoring them by grouping in uh, 7.1, I think. So uh, we're gonna do that. So between six X squared and three X, what is the GCF, right? Okay, let's see, between the numbers, the GCF is three, right? Three is the largest number that will divide them both. Between the X's, you could find a common X because they both had X's go for the lower power. The lower power between the two is a power one. So I pull out three X, which means the first term will have two X. So that three times two is six, X times X is X squared. Six X squared comes back when I write what is remaining. Plus three X, I pulled all of three X, so I only have a one, okay? Please don't say it's a zero, okay? If it's a zero, three X times zero will become a zero. When everything is pulled out, you just have a one. So that was for the first two. For the next two, uh, the GCF between them is, we have a plus in between them. Now between the, the four X and the two, the GCF is a two. The X is not shared, so we don't have a common X. Um, if you pull out a two, if you divide out a two from the four X, you get two X. And if you pull out a two from the two, you pulled everything out, so you're left with a one. Okay. This is essential because you want these two to match, this one and this one. They look identical, which means you could factor it out. 2x plus one itself is a common factor. Collect what is remaining. What's remaining is uh, your three x here and your plus two here. So that'll be three x plus two. You factor it completely and you'll have to foil it to check if your answer is right. Okay. So I'll say perform check by foiling by four. Now remember this is AC method that kicks in when you have a coefficient other than one. May I say coefficient? I mean leading coefficient other than one. Okay. And uh, remember again, the technique is you find those two numbers by doing B and AC, not B and C, but B and AC. The AC tells you that you have to find the factors for AC. And then once you get those two numbers, you don't just lift them as, a, as your answer, but you will insert them in the place of your middle term. In the place of seven X, you insert those two numbers so that they will add up to seven X, because that's what it's supposed to do. But this turns the trinomial into four terms. And so you could group them two by two and uh, do the GCF within each uh, pair, and that will bring you down to complete uh, factorization. Let's look at this problem. 8u squared minus 17u minus 21. 
as always, look for GCF. Step one, factor out GCF. Do we have a GCF here? No, we don't, not in this problem, okay. All right, now because there is no GCF, this is all we have. And so you will, your attention next goes to the coefficient. Step two is basically looking at the coefficient, uh, leading coefficient. The leading coefficient is eight, which is not a one, obviously. Therefore, you know which method to choose. If the leading coefficient is one, you know you will do BC method. Leading coefficient is not a one, you will use AC method. So I'll just simply write a step two for us as a notification. Okay. Um, identify the leading coefficient. I'll just say LC, okay, leading coefficient. If leading coefficient equals is one, use, then use. BC method, okay? If the leading coefficient LC is not equal to one, if it's something else other than one, then use AC method, all right? So um, obviously here, uh, we identified our LC to be eight, which is not equal to one. Therefore, we're gonna use AC method. So for that, let's identify our B. Our B is always the middle one, negative 17. But instead of C, we now have AC. So I have to multiply the eight with a negative 21. Please watch for the sign, okay? Negative 21. Okay, that gives us negative 168. Please do your a calculation on a calculator. Okay. okay. So now let's uh, list out the factors of negative 168. Okay. okay, this is gonna be fun. Okay, it's a large number and it's, a, it's an even number too. So you can kind of uh, anticipate a lot of possibilities. So let's start with uh, one and negative 168. That's one obvious possibility. Okay. Two is gonna work. Okay. You can use your calculator to get this. I'm doing that too. Two and negative 84. Well, three also works. Three and negative 56. Four and negative 42. Wow. The first time I'm running out of space for our factors, okay? Then for five doesn't work, six and negative 28, seven and negative 24, eight and negative 21, right? Okay, so the other, other possibilities would be a negative one and positive 168, yeah? Uh, uh, negative two and positive 64, negative three, positive 56, and so on, okay? Again, remember we're trying to do lesser stuff because we want to get this done quickly. So you, know, you come back here and see what your B is. Your B is a negative 17, right? So if I change the signs, the, their sum would always give me a positive number because the bigger number is always positive. So the, the, they will always give a, a, a positive number. We want a negative number. So I'm not going to generate the uh, other list with the switch signs. So if you keep adding them, you're going to get different results, right? You're looking for negative 17. So I will leave that part to you, okay? Add them, use your calculator and add them. You'll have an idea of what you get. Okay. This is going to be negative 167. This is going to be negative 82 and so on. Okay, I'll let you do that. And then you will see that um, you will hit upon 7 and negative 24. 7 minus 24 is negative 17. That is our winner, okay? But remember, this is AC method. So we'll take our winner and insert it in our middle term. So let me come back here and we need more room. So eight U squared minus 17 U minus 21. So eight U squared. So the two new numbers are seven and minus 24. So I have plus seven U minus 24 U. Remember, we're inserting the U because we're replacing negative 17 U, right? <laughs> you want them to be like terms, so they both must be U so that you could 
add them, right? So let's recall that this was the same as this, right? Okay. So you turned your trinomial into four terms. Now group them two by two. What's the GCF between eight U squared and seven U? Well, the numbers, there's nothing common there, but only a U could be pulled out. So you're left with eight U plus a seven, because you pulled out a U. When I say pull out, remember, I divided it out. You divide out a U in eight U squared, you get eight U. Divide out a U from the seven U, you get seven. All right, and then for the next two terms, both of them are negative, so I pull out a negative. 24 and 21, they both are divisible by three, right? Okay, so that will be 8u. Remember, I pulled out a minus and a 3, so that the terms inside the parentheses would, would be positive because the minus is common out. So negative 3 times 8u is negative 24. Do a quick check there. And then you already pulled out a minus, so it has to be a plus inside, so that minus times plus will be a minus. 3 times 7 would give me a 21. Okay. You have to tread carefully, especially in this case where you pulled out a minus. They both had negatives, right? So you pulled out a minus, so remember to put a plus inside so that the operation would be intact. All right, uh, as we expect, these two must match. 8u plus 7 is pulled out. What is remaining is this u from here and the minus 3 from here. You got your factors there. It's completely factorized because they both are in parentheses. You have two factors there, as always. Perform check by doing the FOIL method. Okay. So with that, we've come to the end of our uh, 7.3. I hope you enjoyed it, and I look forward to the next video. Thank you.